So one of the most common questions I get asked whenever I post the video of my plane flying is how did you film that? Are you using a drone? You have someone else following you? Like how did you film that? Are you moving a camera in your wing when you have these moving shots? Well, the answer is really simple. And in this video, we're going to talk about my filming process. So whenever someone asks, I can just point them to this video. The secret is we're using a 360 camera and I'm actually filming this on a 360 camera as we speak. So the camera I use is the Insta360 1X3. Um, I also have the 1X2, which is also a good camera and I don't think it's honestly that much better to buy the X3. If you're on a budget, just buy the X2. Um, I will link to both in the description. I'm going to link to everything that we talk about in the description, just so you know. Um, but the beauty of a 360 camera is it's recording me, but it's also recording everything around. So if we want to look ahead of us and see what's going on there, there's a plane taking off, we can turn the camera around. Um, if we want to look at, uh, let's wait for the plane to take off. If we're going to look around, we can move the camera around in post-processing, so I don't have to worry about framing and composition. The beauty of a 360 camera is that since it's recording everything, we don't have to worry about framing perfectly, right? So if I want to move the camera in flight to look at the tail versus the front, we can do that. We can zoom in, we can zoom out, lots of different options. Now, one of the downsides of a 360 camera is it's a little counterintuitive to edit it, but we'll talk about that. And it's also easy to kind of overdo it a little bit and, and kind of you get a lot of distortion. When you get one, it's fun to do. I get it. I did it too. But um, making a 360 camera look like a normal camera, I think is kind of the best way to use it. So let's take a look at the camera and how it works. So this is the 360 camera. It's sitting on the Insta360 quote unquote invisible selfie stick. Um, you can see there's two lenses. There's one here, there's one here. Each lens records about 170 degrees. So it's not a full 360 and you can see there's some blind spots, right? But the software does a really good job of stitching those two images together. And because of that, there's it makes a guess as to what's in that blind spot. So this whole selfie stick actually disappears. Um, the software knows to make it go away. So. The beauty of that is that whole video I just recorded, I was holding this in my hand and you can't really tell. Um, if you're on a one wheel or on a bike or, or something else and you're holding this out like that, you got, you know, it's recording you, but it's not recording this in your hand. So that's really cool. We can leverage that on the airplane by using a very long selfie stick here. So this is a mount, again, linked appropriately. So this clamps onto the strut, it holds onto this uh, aluminum tube, which then has a threaded end. So that's actually the extension that's normally on it. So normally the camera sits out, you know, you can adjust it, but it usually sits out about here. Um, but because of it being in the blind spot, none of this shows up. That's why I put some aluminum tape up there to further help conceal the mount. Uh, sometimes you'll see a little edge action edge distortion up here where it's stitching the two halves together but generally it does a really good job the other mount i use less frequently so a lot of times i'll have that off because it is drag um, is up here and i'll also link to this this is really more of a gopro mount um, it's great for a smaller camera so this ball head goes in there and you clamp it in um, good for pointing a gopro just at the plane like this fixed but Many times I've used just this selfie stick, which is pretty light on here. I just try not to have it extended out that far because that's a lot of force to put on a single point. So usually when I'm using that, um, the camera might be in this configuration like so. So those are the two main points I use on the exterior, which creates a lot of dynamic shots. I'll also turn this around so the camera is back here. And this is a pretty cool shot because you kind of look forward. You can see the landing gear when you're touching down, but you can also look back, see the tail, and you have a great view below as well. Now, since we're recording in all directions, this really shines inside here. So I have a mount up here. Usually I just put the 360 up here, aim it down a little bit. 
And from here, since it's recording everything, I can see control inputs. I can see the instruments. If I want to see what my speed is when I'm touching down, it's great for that. Also see outside. And if you're inclined to film yourself, it also films you. So what is there not to like? One camera, get instruments outside, passengers and pilot. You used to have to have a camera up here looking forward and a camera up here looking back. This is really helpful, especially if you have one outside, one inside. When you're learning how to fly, um, you can match your control actions with what the airplane's doing and you can see your speed. So if you're outside and you're bouncing or you're kind of all over the place, you can corroborate that movement with what you're doing inside. You can look at the speed and you can actually have a really meaningful debriefing on how to get better. I, I did a lot of that when I was learning how to fly tailwheel. So pretty short video, but this is how I make these videos. Usually it's this mount with an extension on it. Um, sometimes it's the mount on that side and sometimes it's the mount in here as well. Hope that was helpful. The plane's nice and shiny so I can say goodbye in here. Uh, thanks for watching, subscribe, buy the stuff in the link. I get a little commission which uh, helps pay for this thing. See ya.